Hello, I'm Mike Teeter, and today I'm doing a one-month review of the VR World's hottest new headset. You've probably seen the ad somewhere by now for the Oculus Quest 2. Let's see what you got, Oculus. I will be reviewing the good, the bad, and the ugly things about this headset. Full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video. I bought and tested the headset myself. Also, I'm a tech person. It's not just my job, it's also my career. The Quest 2 was my first VR headset and experience, so I decided to share my thoughts on all of it. So here's the good things. The price. The Quest 2 is priced to move for the holidays, starting at just $299, while other headsets cost significantly more. I should point out that there is a more expensive version with a lot more storage space, which is what I purchased thinking like any other smart device, storage would be an issue a few months from now. Build quality. The headset and controllers feel premium, made of strong solid plastics that seem like they can take a few bumps. The operating system and initial setup are very well designed and walk you easily through the whole process, explaining everything as you go. Having zero VR experience, I learned a lot about how the device worked and how I could use it just from that. It's independent and willing to travel. Unlike many other headsets, the Quest 2 is an Android device. It can be used completely wirelessly with no additional hardware. It can download and run many apps and games like Beat Saber or the new VR Star Wars, and it has the horsepower to play them well. Enough. It has decent battery life. I found the standard battery typically lasted about two-ish hours, which at first was just about the time my arms started to feel like they were going to fall off. You can even extend the play with some of the accessories. It has accessories. In regards to the controller, most third-party attachments for the first Quest and Rift S controllers will fit the Quest 2s. Not the headset stuff, though. They changed it, especially the facial interface, just enough so nothing from the first Quest will fit. But it has some issues. Some of these may be situational for me, so I will try to explain in detail, but if you are in the same boat, you may want to take note. So on to the bad. The build quality. While the headset is made from decent materials, the Quest 2 has some glaring flaws and drawbacks. First, the controllers. I have large hands, and while the button and trigger configuration is very comfortable to use, the shape of the lower part of the controller is horrible. My pinky and ring finger never know quite where to go on the weird, short, egg-shaped hilt. I ended up buying saber handles, which were an improvement, but still not great. Then ultimately designed and 3D printed my own custom pistol grips for them. Link below if you have a 3D printer and want to try them out. Second, the head strap design. The elastic head strap, while strong enough for initial use, quickly becomes uncomfortable and a constant hassle to adjust especially once you start to sweat. The cloth elastic strap absorbs all the moisture, so the non-locking adjustments slip loose as they become lubricated by your own fluids. But wait, you can stop the slip if you buy the official Oculus brand head strap upgrade, now just a low additional price of $50 USD. Sanitation. Even before the plague, I'd have felt the Quest 2 was kind of skeevy. Now doubly so. The face pad and head strap are sponges. They suck up gallons of sweat and have no easy way to be cleaned between uses. The idea of sharing the Quest 2 with anyone is disgusting. It's akin to putting someone else's underpants on your face after they ran several miles wearing them in mid-July. Heck, it's disgusting taking a bathroom break and coming back to put on a squishy, cold, damp face sponge. Never mind if it's someone else's sweat. Ugh. But wait, you can stop slathering your friends' heads with your bodily excretions if you get the official Oculus brand head strap upgrade. Now just for the low additional price of $50 USD. And don't forget to pre-order the new Oculus brand facial interface pad upgrade for the low, low additional price of $29 USD. 
Next, the games. The Quest 2 plays most titles fairly well, but with some hitches. Personally, game selection is limited. While there is some great titles available, and the bonus of being truly wireless is awesome, the selection's not even close to the same as what's available on PC. But wait, you can play even more games with the official Oculus brand Link Cable, offering video at 90Hz and the ability to play PC VR games. Now just for the low additional price of $79 USD. You can use third-party cables that cost significantly less, but the video quality and overall experience will be severely lacking. Secondly, I noticed that Beat Saber comes with a reduced graphics mod pre-installed, but has the same great retail price as the desktop version. For example, you do not get the same block and box textures you do on PC. I'm also convinced the hit mechanics are different to make up for accuracy issues with the controller tracking. So you're paying full retail price for a copy of the game that cannot be ported over to other headsets. Yet, for the same price, you can buy the game and play it on any headset. It's not a huge deal breaker, but it's worth bearing in mind, especially if the Quest 2 becomes a VR gateway and you end up buying other headsets. Finally, battery life. While good at first, it doesn't take long for your body to start outlast the charge. If you have a link cable, $79 USD, it will charge the headset while you use it greatly increasing your playtime. But wait, you can get even more untethered gameplay if you buy the official Oculus brand head strap with battery upgrade. Now, just for the low additional price of $129 USD. And now the ugly. Even if you get the official link cable, there's a major issue I have with the Quest 2. Only the newest top-tier NVIDIA graphics cards have USB-C outputs, so if you want to game from the PC, it has to be done through the motherboard USB Type-A or C 3.1 connectors, or you need to spend at least $800 to get a GPU that supports the Type-C connection and takes full advantage of the GPU's rendering potential. On the other hand, you can get a more expensive headset that has similar specs, is more comfortable, and can be connected to a much more common display port, while spending less than it would cost to get the Quest 2 to the same level. The bottom line is that if you want a quality portable VR experience you can use while you travel, the Quest 2 is a great choice. I can't stress enough how good the headset is on its own. But, as soon as you want more, and you will, you'll find yourself looking to get upgrades to the headset and your PC that will ultimately bring the cost up to or higher than what you'd pay for a more expensive headset now. My recommendation is to not get the Quest 2 as a test platform for VR, unless you're fine knowing that at some point it will be a $300 dust collector. Find someone with a demo unit or who owns a VR headset, watch online reviews, and get a headset that will work best with your existing hardware, unless you're explicitly looking for a quality portable VR gaming device. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. See you around next time.